I started improv everywhere about 10 years ago when I moved to New York City with an interest in acting and comedy. Because I was new to the city, I didn't have access to a stage, so I decided to create my own in public places. I think our best projects are ones that are site specific and happen at a particular place for a reason. And one morning I was riding the subway, I had to make a transfer at the 53rd Street stop where there's these two giant escalators. And it's a very depressing place to be in the morning, it's very crowded. So I decided to try to stage something that could make it as happy as possible for one morning. Morning rush hour, it's very cold outside, people are coming in from Queens, transferring from the E train to the 6 train. and. They're going up these giant escalators on their way to their jobs. So there's a photograph that illustrates it a little bit better. He gave 2,000 high fives that day, and he washed his hands before and afterward, and uh, did not get sick. And that was done also without permission, um, although no one seemed to care. Uh, so I'd say over the years, one of the most common criticisms I see of improv everywhere left anonymously in YouTube comments is, these people have too much time on their hands. <laughs> You know, as kids, we're taught to play, and we're never given a reason why we should play. It's just acceptable that play is a good thing. And I think that's sort of the point of improv everywhere, is it's that there is no point, and that there doesn't have to be a point. We don't need a reason. As long as it's fun, and it seems like it's going to be a funny idea, and it seems like the people who witness it will also have a fun time, then that's enough for us. And I think as adults, we need to learn that there's no right or wrong way to play. Thank you very much. <laughs>